I'm Robin Boyce of City Corner. We've got a great show coming up. We're going to talk about virtual learning coming back this fall for the city of St. Louis. Also, we've got some great information coming up about some black restaurants in the area who have been able to partner with Snooks. Come on back. Thank you for joining us here for City Corner in the studios with me. I've always say that in the studios, but with me virtually now, we have some great guests uh, from uh, the uh, St. Louis Board of Education, as well as from Local 420. Uh, our guest with us first off would be Mr. Byron Clemens, who is the spokesperson for Local 420. That would be the, the American Federation of Teachers, correct? And That's also, correct. all right, and also Principal Frederick Steele, who's with Collegic, uh, the School of, of Medical Bioscience here in the St. Louis area, Magnet School, a very good school that's doing the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Steele, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Back to school. Um, is this going to be, Mr. Steele, a difficult process? Or is this something that you all are ready for? It's definitely a learning curve. Um, I believe it's a challenging process, and I appreciate that we have two weeks to really walk alongside our staff to get ready for instructing students virtually. Um, but I'm confident in my staff that they have the, the skill already and that they have the will to, to be ready for our students and provide as rigorous and challenging and um, influential uh, education this semester as they would even if they were in person. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Mr. Clemens, the teachers, they really stood up downtown at the uh, Board of Education building saying, hey, we need to do something different here in the beginning stages of discussing this. But uh, Superintendent um, Adams did come out and say we need to talk about this. And they did a survey. And the survey came back saying virtual learning. So there, there were two surveys, one before COVID really took off. There, COVID is driving the bus for all of us, and we're trying to figure this out as we go along. Um, we have worked with Dr. Adams since last March 1st in closing the school district down in a calm fashion that kept everybody employed, including our non-certificated personnel. We're really proud of that, and we, we found some ways to make that happen. Now we're scrambling again to do that, but Dr. Adams and the school board have been always receptive to our recommendations. We, we helped put this plan together. We have a couple members who are on the COVID task force. We've even trained some of our building reps to uh, be uh, contact tracers with Johns Hopkins University. So this is new territory for all of us, yeah. but I feel confident that we're doing everything we can to make this happen in the best way possible, including, as Mr. Steele knows, the professional development of his school. We're going to try and keep everybody safe, follow a physical distancing, wearing masks. I have a mask right here. I just took it off. I'm in the room by myself, but we're all doing that. And uh, we're first, our job is always to keep the children safe, but we also want to keep the faculty and staff safe as well. And one of the things that's good about our current administration, um, there's a principal's union, Local 44. There's Local 420 for the teachers and non-certificated right. staff. The nurses have NEA. The custodians uh, uh, have the laborers. And SEIU represents the cafeteria workers. All those folks have a seat at the table. And I gotta say, Dr. Adams is working with us. It's not, we don't agree 100% on everything, but sure. we really have moved forward in a way to keep everybody safe. But it so seems we're feeling like good it, about that. It really does, it seems like it's working at Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience High School. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be on the advisory board at this wonderful school that was created several years back. COVID was one of the subjects, Mr. Steele, that was taught in fall of 2019. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, well, you know, as we know, there's a large family of viruses called coronaviruses. And um, in our medical interventions class taught by Ninfa Matiase, mm -hmm. she, she, the students had already learned about it last fall. 
Um, it's medical intervention is the name of the class. And so she has a fully outfitted uh, biomedical lab so they could, they could, they could look at things uh, if, if they were available in person and study about the, the nature and the biology of the virus. Well, she, I mean, she really pushed those kids ahead of the, the curve then, don't you think, by actually introducing that subject in 2019? Absolutely. Uh, as we know, um, I believe SARS, it was within that family of coronaviruses as well. So it's, it's not a new thing necessarily. It's just a new right. strand. And, and so students were quite familiar with it when once the name started being publicized mm -hmm. in the news. Um, they were like, oh, yeah, I know about that. I learned about it last semester. Exactly. You've got some really great gifted teachers over there. And this is a school that's dealing with medical science. And we're going to see a lot more students, because of what's happened with this pandemic, probably applying for this school? I sure hope so. <laughs> you definitely have to be interested in the school to really come, to, exactly. be, to be accepted, obviously, first of all, and then to be able to really dig into taking two science classes every year. Mm -hmm. um, and at least one of them is a biomedical science class. So really, they'll emerge ready for a, a pre-medical program in, in the university when they're done. But I, I hope this really increases the amount of interest in our school uh, across the city, especially in St. Louis Public Schools. Um, yes. Because, you know, well, the definitely. original uh, mission of our school is to really serve our, our own students. Yes. Now, uh, with reference to uh, teachers coming back, are they actually going to be in classroom teaching virtually? Or <laughs> are students going to be able to pop in? How is this working? Well, the, um, Dr. Adams has issued requirements for the next few weeks. Um, all of us will be in the building, at this, uh, live in the building, physically in the building, um, but we will be distanced, if not all in separate rooms. Um, there'll be uh, one or two small um, brief occasions where we all may need to gather in one space that's quite large and quite uh, with a, lot, a good airflow. But most of the time, teachers will be in their own classrooms tuning in virtually with their laptop computer. On occasion, there may be small groups who are in the same department or teach the same subject that want to be in the same general space um, to interact with each other, but um, it'll, be, it'll be in person and safe. And then when students begin learning on August 31st, uh, it'll be up to the teacher what they wanna do. Mm -hmm. If they wanna come into the building and they wanna teach from their classroom because they prefer that setting, they're welcome to do that. Uh, they're also welcome to stay at home in their own little workspace that they've created at home and teach from there. Really? Uh, or a combination. The teachers have that kind of option. Uh, they Mr. do. Williams, is this something that the teachers worked out ahead of time, yes. trying to get something done or just to stay safe here? That, that's correct. And uh, we'll have people who can work from the building, but it's still 100% virtual after these mm -hmm. professional development days for the next two weeks when we go back on the 31st. It's, it's all 100% uh, virtual. There will be a few centers set up. This is uh, something we've been working on for special needs students. There'll okay. be two early childhood centers. We're still working out the details for that, but some of our students absolutely are gonna need something else, uh, like uh, the Michaels orthopedics section. Right. We, we need to accommodate those students. And so we're, we're figuring that out, but for almost everybody, uh, we'll have professional development for the first two weeks and then go back in a virtual school situation, but teachers can go in. We're also trying to repurpose some of our staff um, because not every job is still functional during this 100% virtual Everything to reach out to <laughs> reach out to, to parents. Yeah. Uh, some parents need some technical help, so we'll have coaching for that. Uh, just as Do uh, Mr. Steele had mentioned, uh, the whole idea of distributing the technology and hotspots and returning yeah. things and having having those fixed and updated uh, that's all part of what's a little bit of a struggle now but we're we're going to get through that and I do have to say we had Dr. Anthony Fauci as a our town hall guest two weeks ago and he had some words of reassurance and I know I know that uh, Mr. Steele is aware of this as well mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there's a good chance there'll be a vaccine in late December, early January. It's still cautious optimism about how it'll be distributed, but right. we're going to get through this. He's He's been around for 50 years, worked for six administrations. SARS is one of the things, uh, uh, several other serious pandemics. 
we'll, we'll get through this together. It's difficult for everybody right now, but let's have a little faith in each other. This is going to be a situation that is going to continue to um, exacerbate itself to an extent, but it looks as though, and it sounds like, St. Louis City Public Schools, you all worked it out. It looks pretty good. Is that, that correct, Mr. Steele? Would you say that? I agree. Um, there A lot of hard work went into this summer planning for instruction virtually. Um, it was a big team. I was, on, uh, I was a small part of that team with the technology uh, piece, just making sure um, we don't overlook anything kids will need technologically yeah. when they're at home. I'm, I, I'm impressed with how ready I, I believe we are. Now it's just um, we get together as each individual school and work together as a school unit to make sure we're ready and make sure we're well supported for our students. How are we going to work out things for some students who may not have access to broadband or have a laptop <laughs> or that availability? Have, have kids gotten an opportunity or is, is the Board yeah. of Education looking at how yes. to size it up for kids? So thankfully, the, the district committed to a one-to-one -one ratio um, a few months ago. Um, devices for every student in, one of, in each of our schools. At the high school level, uh, all of our students will be receiving laptop computers um, in about 10 days, starting in about 10 days. Excellent. So everyone will have a laptop computer. It's just more conducive for high school kind of academic work than a, an iPad might be. So okay. um, I'm confident okay. that, will, that will level the playing field for our students. I know the district also has a plan to determine who needs uh, mobile hotspots as well for internet Excellent. access. So I they can use those computers at home. Excellent. That, that's what we really need to know. Are our kids really going to get an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. this law? I want to thank you both for coming in. Sounds really good. I'm glad to hear that the Board of Education was able to come together, superintendent, administration, um, the, the management over the high schools and different schools and the teachers union were able to just come together and make a difference for our young people. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming and talking to us today. Thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome, Robin. Thanks for the opportunity. Take care. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. Selfie. <laughs> Nailed it.
so many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. From the arts, architecture, and culture, An all-new development, including the Cortex Community Center. And you're never too far from great music and entertainment. So come and experience St. Louis. I'm Robin Boyce and welcome back to City Corner. It with me right now, I was gonna say that again in the studios, but with me right now, Zooming with me here on City Corner are some great people who are doing some good things with yummy food. We need that. We need to be happy and feel good. And food does that for people. But I wanna introduce you, Mr. Andy DeCoo. Did I pronounce that right, Andy? That's DeCoo? correct, yep. All right. <laughs> and Andy is especially Dilly, Deli, category manager for Snooks Markets. Thank you so much for joining us. Also with me is restaurateur, Rachel Burns, who's owner of Bowl Spoon Creamery. Oh my goodness. Those boxes over there looking good. All the ice cream that you had, your website, oh my God. And also with me is Mr. Darren Young, who's owner of the Fattened Calf. Filipino barbecue, come on now, oh my God. Snooks did an awesome job, uh, Andy, in putting together a partnership along with several black restaurants in the St. Louis region. T tell us a little bit more about that project. Well, it, it started it started back um, right as COVID started and we had a lot of our local, I, see, I run, I, I do more of the, uh, the specialty cheese for Snooks. So um, a lot of our specialty cheese, uh, our local providers, uh, reached out and they lost 75 to 80 percent of their business as soon as as soon as restaurants closed down. So we started working with them first to to build a plan, and then um, uh, there was success there. So we moved that into some restaurants that we had a, a partnership with, and then Feast Magazine came out with a an article about uh, uh, yeah. black uh, owned restaurants in St. Louis. I think there was around 70 um, uh, 70 restaurants mentioned in there. So I spent a day and a half just going through reaching out to their Facebook sites, their, okay. e their email addresses, um, and had some, some of the neighborhood about 30 uh, get back to us and, um, and, and, you know, have some interest. And so, um, you know, Rachel and Darren are kind of the, the poster children for, yeah. for how <laughs> successful this was because they, they've been really great to work with. And, and, you know, it's, it's about uh, the way we, uh, approach this was was you know we are a local we're st louis's local grocery store yes. so how can we support our, our st louis local businesses and um you know we have them in the store we want to showcase them and we want to make sure that they're that they're that after this this uh pandemic is over that they're still standing with us and and we Great plan on a, a long-term partnership for, for with them this isn't this isn't something we're just gonna um get out of once the uh, the pandemic is gone we're gonna That's a we're good gonna be thing. partnering with these guys for a long time Excellent. That we needed that so much in there here in the St. Louis area. I wish we could do that with politics. Just <laughs> right. like you do food. I think it's wonderful. Rachel, tell us more about the Bold Spoon Creamery. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Sure. Well, I'll start with yummy, yummy. Uh, <laughs> so we began actually in COVID. So our first sale was May 2nd. So our plan initially uh, was to launch in uh, still it was May, but not in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But, you know, we were in the situation we were in. So we paused a moment, tried to figure out a path forward uh, because our initial path was actually wholesale only selling to restaurants. And clearly that was not a viable path at the time. So we just uh, retooled our thinking and went to an online model. So we started selling online and delivering and then when farmers markets became available, we started participating in farmers markets. All right. And then unbelievably, Snooks um, reached out to us about partnering, partnering with them, which has been amazing. You know, only being in business for, you know, a short time, it, there's just so many questions that I had that 
obviously a larger business would not have had. Um, it made a big difference for you to have Snooks Market come on board and ask you to come on board with them to, yes. to, to uh, sell your foods. Yes, I mean, it made us do everything, um, you know, make kind of packaging improvements, make it efficiently. Yeah. It made us do it earlier than probably we would have otherwise. Yeah. So to me, the lesson is say yes to things, even if you're not exactly ready for it, because you'll likely rise to the occasion. And they've been super um, helpful and supportive in helping us do just that. I think that, that it sounded like Hamilton to me. I'm not throwing away my shot. And you went for it. Yes, there's no, no nope. throwing away your shot. <laughs> nope, no way. Darren, the fattened calf. Oh, yes. my God. When I read that Feast article and you all were describing the food and the barbecuing and the garlic, I'm like, oh, my God. I got to get over there and get some. Yes, Tell us a little bit about uh, what you and your wife have done and uh, what, what you're doing now along with the, with the partnership with Snooks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the Fattened Calf, uh, our concept is focused on smoked meats and Filipino barbecue. Uh, but really, the uh, Filipino barbecue has been the niche uh, for us in the St. Louis community. Um, the, the idea of the Fattened Calf uh, was really... Uh, burst outside of this uh, idea of hosting game nights and dinner parties at our house. And we realized that, you know, hey, maybe there's something here. You know, maybe uh, this is something that we can get the St. Louis community uh, involved with. And we figured out that um, there was no... Uh, Philip, not a lot of Filipino food options uh, yeah. here in St. Louis. And, yeah. and by the way, my wife is Filipino, Filipino American. Uh, mm -hmm. We're both from Los Angeles, uh, where yeah. uh, if you could find Filipino food uh, in, in every city, uh, every street corner. Um, but here in St. Louis, there's not a lot of it. Uh, so it, it didn't take long for us to figure out uh, that maybe we should emphasize the uh, Filipino food um, and also uh, emphasize the, the barbecue nature of it because St. Louis is a barbecue community. Okay. Um, so we, we started by doing uh, what we call pop-ups, uh, pop-up restaurants. Um, and we did our first pop-up in 2019, March, at Milk Toast Bar in South Jefferson. Uh, okay. Before that, we started at actually the Cherokee Street Market in 2018. Um, but we figured out the, the uh, pop-up restaurant model was going to be a little bit more successful. And uh, since our first pop-up in 2019, every month we've gotten bigger and bigger. Uh, we uh, launched a residency um, at Earthbound Beer. So we operate outside of Earthbound Beer. That happened. Right. Uh, January 2020. So that's sort of uh, like an incubator for you? Yeah, yeah. So it's an in incubator in what we consider our resident location okay. where we do most of our pop-ups. Uh, and because of COVID, we, you know, we had to pivot. We switched from calling it pop-ups to pull-ups, uh, where it's a takeout window and we sell a full tray of food. Uh, but but during COVID, it, it was interesting. Um, we started making uh, sausage and a lot of like ready-to-eat meals. Wow. Uh, that we would sell and uh, there's a Filipino style sausage that's called longanisa there's a sweet version and then there's a savory version of it and we smoked it on our barbecue grill uh, and we started selling those per order and uh, they ended up being a big hit uh, and Andy reached out to us about the opportunity to partner with Schnucks uh, so we said yeah absolutely yes why why not um, I mean, we're in, a, uh, we're in a place where we're looking to grow and, and we've had a lot of traction. And uh, I think Schnucks allowed us to have uh, the platform uh, that we need to have. Uh, we have a lot of customers around the St. Louis uh, right. metro area. And sometimes one or two pop-ups a month is not enough to meet the, the demand in the crowd. So now uh, people can get it every day at their local so Schnucks. Schnucks can kind of broaden that. They both both uh, restaurants brand a little bit here. Andy, um, uh, there are only specific Snook stores where you can find their uh, really tasty items. Um, is there a place that people can go to find out specifically where um, Batten Calf might be or the uh, Bold Spoon Creamery? Yeah, absolutely. They can go out to schnooks.com and, and we have a, a local grab and go section in there where they can pull up and see all the restaurants that we've got uh, available and then what stores are carrying uh, 
uh, those those stores. So it, it is it's not in every store, but that's you can go out to that right. site and find it. Right. I, I saw some other familiar uh, uh, restaurants you had on board to Kathy's Kitchen. Right. Yep, and Miss Piggy, you got Miss Piggy on board there. So yeah. and you've got some really great restaurants that are taking the opportunity to uh, uh, be a part of this great partnership. Um, when it comes to ice cream at this time, Miss Rachel, are people really saying, yeah, I need some of that comfort food right now so I can sit back and watch some TV or a movie or what have you? What, do you, what are you seeing? Yes, well, one thing that I'm seeing, which is really surprising to me, is a lot of people are actually gifting our ice cream. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so actually we have uh, a person that reached out to me to say they bought 10 pints and they're keeping four and gifting six. <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, the other thing about our ice cream is there's a big um, kind of desire to support local and yeah. we actually use a lot of local farms in our product. Yes. So the cream and all of our ice creams, the mint, the peaches, the honey, the goat cheese, it's all from other local farms. So I think people get a lot of um, enjoyment out of the fact that when they're supporting us, they're also supporting all of the other local farmers exactly. um, to go into making our product. And that's what's going to make total difference here in the St. Louis area because of businesses coming together like Snooks and with the restaurants. That's, that's making a total difference. Darren, what kind, have people really been like really trying to find out where you guys are? What, what's happening with reference to your foods right now and your partnership with Snooks? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're getting messages every day uh, on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, we, we cannot keep up with this uh, the demand. <laughs> so uh, we're trying good to figure thing, out. Though, uh, right? That's a good yeah, Oh, yeah, it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. So we're trying to figure out what we need to do on our part uh, to grow our infrastructure and our supply. Um, we've gotten a lot of uh, feedback from people about expanding out to the Metro East area, like Illinois okay. area. Um, and uh, it looks like that will probably be our next move uh, to work with a, f a few different schnook stores out there and uh, get more of our products uh, on the shelves. We have I a whole menu that we're looking forward to expanding to. And I can't uh, wait. Yeah. I can't wait to taste everything that you all have to offer and some of the yeah. other restaurants. I, I want to thank you all for coming on. I mean, I'm salivating right now thinking about the food. I told you guys to sh show some stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll come over and check it out myself. I want to thank you all so much. Andy, thank you. Rachel, Darren, thank you so much for coming on City Corner and talking with us about this wonderful partnership. I wish you all the best. I really thank you, Robin. this endeavor. And my television audience, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to City Corner. We'll see you next time. We've got some great information that's coming your way. Thank you.